just screw it up. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. We're going to read chapter 3 to finish off the John Mastami reading. Hare Krishna. Jagadish, let me know. One, two. Now? Okay. Uh, Hare Krishna. We'd like to welcome everyone to our Sunday Krishna book reading here in Srila Prabhupada's Sacred Darshan Room. And remember, if you were with us on John Mastami, we read chapter 1 and 2. But we didn't get to read uh, the birth of Lord Krishna. So today we'll read chapter 3 and then we'll move on to where we are, chapter 33. So open up your Krishna books to chapter 3. And uh, for those of you who English is their second language, you'll notice on the bottom of the screen uh, the subtitles. So this will be easier for you to understand what we're reading. So as always, before we begin, let us offer our respectful obeisances to Srila Prabhupada and to each other. Nama Om Vishnu Vidaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Sri Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharane Nirvasesha Sanyavadi Paskacha Deshatarane. To each other, Vanchakal Patruvius Cha, Kripa Sindhu Pieva Cha, Patita Nam Pavanebio, Vaishnavebio Namo Namaha. So, where's Maharaj? Maharaj! <laughs> Look who's here, Srila Prabhupada. Y your very dear Lokana Swami. Are you going to join us for Krishna book reading? Or We read every Sunday from 4.30 to 5.30. We read a Krishna book re uh, out loud to Prabhupada. We pass the mic around and we each read a paragraph. And then it's... Okay. <laughs> and then at 5.30, uh, then our quarter of six... Devotees come and they chant. So nice to see you in Vrindavan. We've been missing you. So you'll get class tomorrow? So we can all drown in the night. Thank you. We can all drown in the night. Yes, yes, he's drowned. We've been doing this almost three years now. Third time around, so we're just going to keep going. It's always ever fresh. We hear the same story over and over, but it's still... No. Yes. Thank you, Maharaj, for blessing us. Hare Krishna. Oh, for all of you wonderful devotees online, we just got the wonderful, wonderful blessing and association of His Holiness Lokana Swami who's here in Vrindavan visiting us with for possibly a week or so. So you can tune in to ISKCON Vrindavan live in the morning. And in the next few days, he'll give Srimad Bhagavatam class. Okay, so as we were discussing before, we'll uh, 
begin with chapter 3 because we didn't finish the John Mastami story. Chapter 3, The Birth of Lord Krishna. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says that his appearance, birth, and activities are all transcendental and that one who understands them factually becomes immediately eligible to be transferred to the spiritual world. The Lord's appearance or birth is not like that of an ordinary man who is forced to accept a material body according to his past deeds. The Lord's appearance is explained in the second chapter. He appears out of his own sweet pleasure. When the time was mature for the appearance of the Lord, the constellations became very auspicious. The astrological influence of the star known as Rohini was predominant. This star is considered to be very auspicious and is under the direct supervision of Brahma. According to the astrological conclusion, besides the proper situation of the stars, there are auspicious and inauspicious moments due to the different situations of the different planetary systems. At the time of Krishna's birth, the planetary systems were automatically adjusted so that everything became auspicious. At that time, in all directions, east, west, south, north, Everywhere, there was an atmosphere of peace and prosperity. There were auspicious stars visible in the sky and on the surface of the earth in all towns and villages and pasturing grounds and within the minds of everyone, there were signs of good fortune. The rivers were flowing full of waters and lakes were beautifully decorated with lotus flowers. The forests were full with beautiful birds and peacocks. All the birds within the forest began to sing with sweet voices and the peacocks began to dance along with their concerts. The wind blew very pleasantly carrying the aroma of different flowers and the sensation of bodily touch was very pleasant. At home, the brahmanas who were accustomed to offering sacrifices in the fire found their homes very pleasant for offering. Due to disturbances created by the demoniac kings, the sacrificial fire had been almost stopped in the houses of the brahmanas, but now they could find the opportunity to start the fire peacefully. Being forbidden to offer sacrifices, the brahmanas had been very much distressed in mind, intelligence and activities, but just on the point of Krishna's appearance, automatically their minds became full of joy because they could hear transcendental vibration in the sky proclaiming the appearance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The denizens of the Kundarvas and Kinnara planets began to sing and the denizens of Siddhaloka and the planets of Charanas began to offer prayers in the service of Personality of Godhead. In the heavenly planets, the angels and their wives along with the vid Vidyadharas and their wives wives began to dance. The great sages and the demigods being pleased began to shower flowers. At the seashore there was the sound of mild waves and above the sea there were clouds in the sky which began to thunder very pleasingly. When things were adjusted like this, Lord Krishna, Lord Vishnu, who is residing within the heart of every living entity, appeared in the darkness of night as the Supreme Personality of Godhead before Devagi, who appeared as one of the demigoddesses. The appearance of Lord Vishnu at the time could be compared to the rising of the full moon over the eastern horizon. The objection may be raised that since Lord Krishna appeared on the eighth day of the Banning moon. There could be no rising of the full moon. In answer to this, it may be said that Lord Krishna appeared in the dynasty, which is in the hierarchy of the moon. Therefore, although the moon was 
incomplete on that night because of the lord's appearance in the dynasty wherein the moon is himself the original person the moon was in an overjoyous condition so by the grace of krishna he could appear just like a full moon in an in an astronomical treatise by the name kamanikya the constellations at the time of the appearance of lord krishna are very nicely described it is it is confirmed that the child born at that auspicious moment was the supreme brahman or the absolute truth vasudeva saw that wonderful child born as a baby with four hands holding conch shell club disc and lotus flower decorated with the mark of shivatsa wearing the jeweled necklace of kaushtuba stone dressed in yellow silk appearing dazzling like a bright blackish cloud wearing a helmet decked with a white duya stone valuable bracelets earnings and similar other ornaments all over his body and beautified by an abundance of hair on his head due to the extraordinary features of the child vasudeva was struck with wonder how could a newly born child be so decorated vasudeva could therefore understand that lord krishna had now appeared and he became overpowered by the occasion vasudeva very humbly wondered that although he was an ordinary living entity conditioned by material nature and was externally imprisoned by kamsa the all pervading personality of godhead vishnu or krishna had appeared as a child in his home exactly in his original position no earthly child is born with four hands decorated with ornaments and nice clothing fully equipped with all the signs of the supreme personality of godhead over and over was again vasudeva glanced at his child and he considered how to celebrate this auspicious moment generally when a male child is born he thought people observe the occasion with jubilant celebrations and in my home although i am imprisoned the supreme personality of godhead has taken birth how many millions and millions of times should i be prepared to observe this auspicious ceremony when vasudeva who is also called uh, called anankadundubhi was looking at his newborn baby he was so happy that he wanted to give many thousands of cows in charity to the brahmans according to the vedic system whenever there is an auspicious ceremony in kshatriya's king's place palace out of joy the king gives many things in charity cows decorated with golden ornaments are delivered to the brahmanas and sages vasudeva wanted to perform a charitable ceremony to celebrate krishna's appearance but because he was shackled within the walls of kamsa's prison this was not possible instead within his mind he gave thousands of cows to the brahmanas when vasudeva was convinced that the newborn child was the supreme personality of godhead himself he bowed down with folded hands and began to offer him prayers at that time vasudeva was in transcendental position and he became completely free from all fear of kamsa the newborn baby was also flashing his effulgence within the room in which he appeared vasudeva then began to offer his prayers My dear Lord, I can understand who you are. You are the supreme personality of Godhead, the super soul of all living entities and the absolute truth. You have appeared in your own eternal form, which is directly perceived by us. I understand that because I am afraid of Kamsa, you have appeared just to deliver me from the fear. You do not belong to this material world. You are the same person who brings about the cosmic manifestation simply by glancing over material nature.
One who argue, one may argue that the supreme personality of Godhead, who creates the whole cosmic manifestation simply by his glance, cannot come within the womb of Devaki, the wife of Vasudeva. To eradicate this argument, Vasudeva said, "My dear Lord, it is not a very wonderful thing that you have appeared within the womb of Devaki, because the creation was also made in that way. You were lying in the causal ocean as Mahavishnu." And by a briefing process, innumerable universes came into existence. Then you entered into each of the universes as Garbodakashi Vishnu. Then again you expanded yourself as Kshirodakashi Vishnu and entered into the hearts of all living entities and even into the atoms. Therefore, your entrance into the womb of Devaki is understandable in the same way. You appear to have entered, but you are simultaneously all-pervading. We can understand your entrance and non-entrance from material examples. The total material energy remains intact even after being divided into 16 elements. The material body is nothing but the combination of the five gross elements, namely earth, water, fire, air, and ether. Whenever there is a material body, it appears that such elements are newly created, but actually the elements are always existing outside of the body. Similarly, although you have appeared as a child in the womb of Devaki, you are also existing outside. You are always in your abode, but still you can simultaneously expand yourself into millions of forms. One has to understand your appearance with the great intelligence because the material energy is also emanating from you. You are the original source of the material energy, just as the sun is the source of the sunshine. The sunshine cannot cover the sun globally, nor can the material energy, being an emanation from you, cover you. Your appearance to be in the three modes of material energy but actually the three modes of material energy cannot cover you. This is understood by the highly intelligent philosopher. In other words, although you appear to be within the material energy, you are never covered by it. We hear from the Vedic version that the Supreme Brahman accepts his effulgence and therefore everything comes, becomes illuminated. illuminated. We can understand from the Brahma Samhita that the Brahma Jyoti or the Brahman effulgence emanates from the body of the Supreme Lord. And from the Brahman effulgence all creation takes place. It is also stated in the Bhagavad Gita that the Lord is the support of the Brahman effulgence. Therefore, originally, He is the root cause of everything. But persons who are less intelligent think that when the Supreme Personality of Godhead comes within this material world, he accepts the material qualities. Such conclusions are not very mature, but are made by less intelligent. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is directly and indirectly existing everywhere. He is outside this material creation and he is also within it. He is within this material creation not only as Garbhakshaya Vishnu, he is also within the atom. The existence of the atom is due to his presence. Nothing can be separated from his existence. In the Vedic injunctions, we find that the Supreme Soul or the root cause of everything has to be searched. Sorry? Okay. Mm -hmm. In the Vedic injunctions, we find that the Supreme Soul or the root cause of everything has to be searched out because nothing exists independently of the Supreme Soul. Therefore, the material manifestation is also a transformation of his potency. Both inert matter and the living force, the soul, are emanations from him. Only the foolish conclude that when the Supreme Lord appears, he accepts the conditions of matter. Even if he appears to have accepted a material body, he is still not subjected to any material condition. 
Krishna has therefore appeared and defeated all imperfect conclusions about the appearance and disappearance of the supreme personality of godhead okay my lord your appearance existence and disappearance are beyond the influence of the material qualities because your lordship is the supreme brahman and the controller of everything there is nothing inconceivable or contradictory in you as you have said material nature works under your superintendence just like a government officer working under the orders of the chief executive the influence of subordinate activities cannot affect you since you are the supreme brahman everything is existing within you and since all the activities of material nature are controlled by your lordship none of these activities affect you you are called sukham so suklam so you are called shuklam shuklam or whiteness is the symbolic representation of the absolute truth because it is unaffected by material qualities lord brahma is called rakta or red because brahma represents the quality of passion or creation darkness is interested to lord shiva because he annihilates the cosmos the creation annihilation and the maintenance of this cosmic manifestations are conducted by your potencies yet you are always unaffected by those qualities as confirmed in the vedas hari hari nirguna shakti sakshat the supreme personality of godhead is always free from all material qualities it is also said that the qualities of a passion and ignorance are non existent in the person of the supreme lord my lord you are the supreme controller the personality of godhead the supreme great maintaining the order of this cosmic manifestation yet in spite of your being the supreme controller you have so kindly appeared in my home the purpose of your appearance is to kill the followers of the demonic rulers of the world who are in the dress of royal princes but are actually demons i am sure that you will kill all of them and their followers and soldiers I understand that you have appeared in order to kill the uncivilized kamsa and his followers but knowing that you were to appear in order to kill him and his followers he has already killed so many of your predecessors your elder brothers now he is simply awaiting the news of your birth as soon as he hears about it he will immediately appear with all kinds of weapons to kill you After this prayer of Vasudeva Devaki the mother of Krishna offered her prayers she was very frightened because of her brother's atrocities though he said my dear lord your eternal forms like narayana lord rama hayas sitsa varaha narasimha vamana baladeva and millions of similar incarnations emanating from vishnu are described in the vedic literature as original you are original because of because all your forms are incarnations or outside of this material creation your form was existing before this cosmic manifestation was created your forms are eternal and all pervading there are also self evolvent changeless and and contaminated by the material qualities such eternal forms are ever cognizant and full of bliss they are situated in transcendental goodness and are always engaged in different past times you are not limited to a particular form only all such transcendental eternal forms are self sufficient i can understand that you are the supreme 
Lord Vishnu. After many millions of years, when Lord Brahma comes to the end of his life, the annihilation of the cosmic manifestation takes place. At that time, the five elements, namely earth, water, fire, air, and ether, enter into the Mahatattva. The Mahatattva then enters by the force of time into the non-manifested total material energy. The total material energy enters into the energetic pradhan and the pradhan enters into you. Therefore, after the annihilation of the whole cosmic manifestation, you alone remain with your transcendental name, form, qualities and paraphernalia. My Lord, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you because you are the director of the unmanifested total energy and the ultimate reservoir of the material nature. My Lord, the whole cosmic manifestation is under the influence of time, beginning from the moment up to the duration of the year. All act under your direction. You are the original director of everything and the reservoir of all potent energies. All the conditioned souls are continually fleeing from one body to another and one planet to another. Yet they do not get free from the onslaught of birth and death. But when one of these fearful living entities comes under the shelter of your lotus feet, he can lie down without anxiety of being attacked by a formidable death. This statement by Devaki is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita by the Lord himself. There, there the Lord says that even after travelling all over the universe from Brahma Loka to Patal Loka, one cannot escape the attack of birth, death, disease and old age. But one who enters the kingdom of God, the Lord says, is never again obliged to come to the material world. Therefore, my Lord, I request you to save me from the cruel hands of Kamsa the son of Ugrasena, I am praying to your lordships to please rescue me from this fearful condition because you are always ready to give protection to your survivors. The Lord has confirmed this statement in the Bhagavad Gita by assuring Arjuna, you may declare to the world, my devotee shall never be vanquished. While thus praying for the Lord for rescue, Mother Devki expressed her motherly affection. I understand that this transcendental form is generally perceived in meditation by great sages, but I am still afraid because as soon as Kamsa understands that you have appeared, he might harm you. So I request you, for the time being, you become invisible to our material eyes. In other words, she requested the Lord to assume the form as an ordinary child. My only cause of fear from my brother Kamsa, Kamsa is due to your appearance. My Lord Madhusudana, Kamsa may know that you are already born. Therefore, I request you to conceal this four-armed form of your Lordship, which holds the four symbols of Vishnu, namely the conch shell, the disc, the club, and the lotus flower. My dear Lord, at the end of the annihilation of the cosmic manifestation, you put the whole universe within your abdomen. Still, by your unalloyed mercy, you have appeared in my womb. I am surprised that you imitate the activities of ordinary human beings just to please your devotee. On hearing the prayers of Devaki, the Lord replied, My dear mother, in the millennium of Svayambhuvamanu, my father Vasudeva, Vasudeva was living as one of the Prajapatis. His name at that time was Sutapa, and you were his wife named Prisni. At that time, when Lord Brahma was desiring to increase the population, he requested you to generate offspring. You controlled your senses and performed severe austerities. By practicing the breathing exercises of the yoga system, you, both you and your husband could tolerate all the influences of the material laws. The rainy season, the onslaught of the wind, the scorching heat of the sunshine. You also executed all religious principles. 
In this way, you were able to cleanse your heart and control the influences of the material laws. In executing your authority, you used to eat only the leaves of the trees which fell to the ground. Then, with a steady mind and controlled sex drive, you worshipped me, desiring some wonderful benediction from me. Both of you practiced severe austerities for 12,000 years by the calculation of the demigods. During that time, your mind was always absorbed in me. When you were executing devotional service and always thinking of me within your heart, I was very much pleased with you. O oh, sinless mother, your heart is therefore always pure. At that time, also I appeared before you in this form just to fulfill your desire, and I asked you to ask whatever you desired. At that time, you wished to have me born as your son, although you saw me personally, instead of asking for your complete liberation from material bondage under the influence of my energy, you asked me to become your son. In other words, to appear in the material world, the Lord selected his mother and father, namely Krishni and Sutapa. Whenever the Lord comes as a human being, he must have a mother and a father. So he selected Prishni and Sutapa to be his mother and father perpetually. And on account of this, neither Prishni nor Sutapa could ask the Lord for liberation. Liberation is not so important as the transcendental loving service of the Lord. The Lord could have awarded Prishni and Sutapa immediate liberation, but he preferred to keep them within this material world for his different appearances, as will be explained in the following verses. On receiving the benediction from the Lord to become his father and mother, Sutapa and Prishni retired from the activities of austerity and lived as husband and wife in order to beget a child who was the Supreme Lord himself. In due course of time, Prishni became pregnant and gave birth to the child. The Lord spoke to Devaki and Vasudeva, At that time my name was Prishnagarbha. In the next millennium you took birth as Aditya and Kashyapa and I became your child of the name Upendra. At that time, my form was just like a dwarf, and for this reason I was known as Vamanadeva. I give you the benediction that I would take birth as your son three times. The first time, I was known as Pirshnigarbha, born of Pirshne and Sutapa. In the next birth, I was Upendra, born of Aditya and Kashyapa, and now for the third time, I was born as Krishna from you, Devaki and Vasudeva. I have appeared in this Vishnu form just to convince you that I am the same Supreme Personality of Godhead, again, taken birth. I could have appeared just like an ordinary child, but in that way you would not have believed that Supreme Personality of Godhead had taken birth in your womb. My dear father and mother, you have therefore raised me many times as your child with great affection and love and I am therefore very much pleased and obliged to you. And I assure you that this time you shall go back home, back to Godhead, on account of your perfection in your mission. I know you are very concerned about me and afraid of Kamsa. Therefore I order you to t take me immediately to Gokula and exchange me for the daughter who has just been born to your shoulder. Having spoken thus, to his father and mother, the Lord returned himself into an ordinary child in their presence and remained silent. Being ordered by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vasudev prepared to take his son from the delivery room, and exactly at that time a daughter was born to Nanda and Yashoda. She was Yogmaya, the internal potency of Lord. By the influence of his internal potency, Yogmaya, all the residents of Kamsa's palace, especially the doorkeepers, were overwhelmed with deep sleep, and all the place, palace doors opened, although they were 
belt and sacked with iron chains. The night was very dark, but as soon as Vasudev took Krishna on his lap and went out, he could see everything just as in the sunlight. In the Chaitanya Charitramita, it is said that Krishna is just like sunlight and that wherever there is Krishna, the illusory energy which is compared to darkness cannot remain. When Vasudeva was carrying Krishna, the darkness of the night disappeared. All the prison doors automatically opened. At the same time, there was thunder in the sky and severe rainfall. While Vasudeva was carrying his son Krishna in the falling rain, Lord Shesha, in the shape of a serpent, spread his hood over the head of Vasudeva so that he would not be hampered by the rainfall. Vasudeva came onto the bank of the Yamuna and saw that the water of the Yamuna was roaring with waves and that the whole span was of, full of foam. Still in that furious feature, the river gave passage to Vasudeva to cross just as the great Indian Ocean gave path to Lord Rama when he was bridging over the gulf. In this way, Vasudeva crossed the river Yamuna. On the other side, he went to the place of Nand Maharaj, situated in Gokul, where he saw that all the coward men were fast asleep. He took the opportunity to silently enter the house of Yashoda, and without difficulty, he exchanged his son for the baby girl, newly born there. Then, after entering the house very silently and exchanging the boy for the girl, he returned to the prison of Kamsa and silently put the girl on the lap of Devaki. He again clamped the shackles on himself so that Kamsa could not recognize that so many things had happened. Mother Yashoda understood that a child had been born to her but because she was very tired from the labor of childbirth, she fell fast asleep. When she awoke, she could not remember whether she had given birth to a male or a female child. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport of the third chapter of Krishna, the birth of Lord Krishna. Hadivo. So now we'll uh, continue where we left off before. For all of you online, please turn to chapter 33, Description of the Rasa Dance. Thus hearing the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna speaking to pacify them, the gopis became very much pleased. They became completely relieved of the great suffering of separation not only by hearing the words of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but also by touching his hands and legs. After this, the Supreme Personality of Godhead began his rasa dance. A dance in the midst of many girls is called a rasa dance. So Krishna began to dance among the most beautiful and fortunate girls within the three worlds. The gopis of Vrindavan, who were so attracted to him, danced with Krishna hand in hand. Krishna's rasa dance should never be compared to any kind of material dance, such as a ball dance or a society dance. The rasa dance is completely spiritual performance. In order to establish this fact, Krishna, the Supreme Master, expanded himself into many forms and stood beside each gopi. Placing his hand on the shoulder of the gopis on both sides of him, he began to dance in their midst. The mystic expansion of Krishna were not pursued by the gopis because Krishna appeared alone to each of them. Each gopi thought that Krishna was dancing with her alone. Above that wonderful dance, flew many airplanes carrying the denizens of the heavenly planets who were very eager to see the wonderful dance of Krishna with the gopis. The Gandhavas and Kinaras began to sing 
and accompanied by their respective wives all the gandavas began to shower flowers on the dancers as the gopis and krishna danced together a very blissful musical sound was produced from the tinkling of their bells ornaments and bangles it appeared that krishna was a greenish sapphire locket in the midst of a golden necklace decorated with valuable stones while krishna and gopis danced they displayed extraordinary bodily features their movement of their legs their placing their hands on one another the movements of their eyebrows their smiling the movements of gopis breasts gopis clothes and earrings their cheeks their hair with flowers as krishna and the gopis sang and danced these combined to appear like clouds thunder snow and lightning krishna's bodily features appeared just like a group of clouds the gopis songs were like thunder their beauty appeared to be just like lightning in the sky and the drop of perspiration visible on their faces appeared like falling snow in this way the gopis and krishna fully engaged in dancing the necks of the gopis became tinted with red due to their desire to enjoy krishna more and more to satisfy them krishna began to clap his hands in time with their singing actually the whole world is full of krishna's singing but it it is appreciated in different ways by different kinds of living entities this is confirmed in the bhagavad gita ye yada mam pravartyante tam stadaiva bhajami aham krishna is dancing and every living entity is also dancing but there is a difference between the dancing in the spiritual world and that in the material world this is expressed by the author of the chaitanya charitamrita who says that the master dance dancer is krishna and everyone else is his servant everyone is trying to imitate krishna's dancing those who are actually in krishna consciousness respond rightly to the dancing of krishna they do not try to dance independently but those in the material world try to imitate krishna as the supreme personality of godhead the living entities are dancing under the direction of krishna's maya and are thinking that they are equal to krishna but this is not a fact in krishna consciousness this misconception is absent for a person in krishna consciousness knows that krishna is the supreme master and everyone else is his servant one has to dance to please krishna not to imitate or attempt to become equal to supreme personality of godhead the gopis wanted to please krishna and therefore as krishna sang they responded and encouraged him by saying well done well done sometimes they presented beautiful music for his pleasure and he responded by praising their singing when some of the gopis became very tired from dancing and moving their bodies they placed their hands on the shoulders of a shri krishna then their hair loosened and flowers fell to the ground when they placed their hand on krishna's shoulder they became overwhelmed by the fragrance of his body which emanated from the lotus other aromatic flowers and the pulp of sandalwood they became filled with attraction for him and they began to kiss him some gopis touched krishna's cheek to cheek and krishna began to offer them chewed betel nuts from his mouth which they accepted with great pleasure by kissing and by accepting those betel nuts the gopis spiritually advanced the gopis became tired after long singing and dancing krishna was dancing beside them and to alleviate their fatigue they took shri krishna's hand and placed it on their raised breast krishna's hand as well as the breast of the gopis are eternally auspicious therefore when they combine both of them became spiritual enhanced the gopis so enjoyed the company of krishna the husband of the goddess of fortune that they forgot that 
दे हैड अनी अदर हजबेंड्स इन दी वर्ल्ड एंड अपॉन बींग एम्बरेस्ड बाय द आर्म्स ऑफ कृष्णा एंड डांसिंग एंड सिंगिंग विद हिम दे फॉर गॉड एवरीथिंग श्रीमद भागवतम दस डिस्क्राइब्स द ब्यूटी ऑफ द गोपीज वाइल दे वर रसा डांसिंग विद कृष्णा देयर वर लोटस फ्लावर्स ओवर बोथ देयर ईयर्स एंड देयर फेसेज वर डेकोरेटेड विद सैंडलवुड पल्प दे वोर तिलक एंड देयर वर ड्रॉप्स ऑफ परस्पीरेशन ऑन देयर स्माइलिंग माउथ फ्रॉम देयर फीट केम द टिंगलिंग साउंड ऑफ एंकल बेल्स एंड बैंगल्स द फ्लावर्स विद इन देयर हेयर वर फॉलिंग टू द लोटस फीट ऑफ कृष्णा एंड ही वॉज वेरी सेटिस्फाइड As stated in the Brahma Samhita, all these gopis are expansions of Krishna's pleasure potency. Touching their bodies with his hands and looking at their pleasing eyes, Krishna enjoyed the gopis exactly as a child enjoys playing with the reflection of his body in a mirror. When Krishna touched the different parts of their bodies, the gopis felt surcharged with spiritual energy. They could not adjust their loosened clothes. although they tried to keep them adjusted properly their hair and garments became scattered and their ornaments loosened <coughs> as they forgot themselves in the company of krishna while krishna was enjoying the company of the gopis in the rasa dance the astonished demigods and their wives gathered in the sky the moon being afflicted with a sort of lust began to watch the dance and became stunned with wonder the gopis had prayed to the goddess Kathayani to have Krishna as their husband now Krishna was fulfilling the desire by expanding himself in as many forms as there were gopis and enjoying them exactly like a husband Shila Sukha Deva Goswami has remarked that Krishna is self sufficient he is atma rama he doesn't need anyone else for his satisfaction but because the gopis wanted krishna as their husband he fulfilled their desire when krishna saw that the gopis were tired from dancing with him he immediately began to wipe his hands over their faces so that their fatigue would be relieved in order to reciprocate the kind hospitality of krishna the gopis began to look at him lovingly they were overjoyed by the auspicious touch of the hand of krishna Their smiling cheeks shone with beauty and they began to sing the glories of Krishna with transcendental pleasure. As pure devotees, the more the gopis enjoyed Krishna's company, the more they became enlightened with his glories and thus they reciprocated with him. They wanted to satisfy Krishna by glorifying his transcendental pastimes. Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead, the master of all masters. and the gopis wanted to worship him for his unusual exhibition of mercy upon them the gopis in krishna entered the water of the yamuna yamuna just to relieve their fatigue from the rasa dance the lily flower garlands around the necks of the gopis was torn to pieces due to the gopis embracing the body of krishna and the flowers were reddish from being smeared with the kumkum on their breasts the bumblebees were humming about in order to get honey from the flowers krishna and the gopis entered the water of the yamuna just as an elephant enters a water tank with his many female companions both the gopis and krishna forgot their real identities playing in the water enjoying each other's company and relieving the fatigue of rasa dancing the gopis began to splash water on the body of krishna in the all the while smiling and krishna enjoyed this as krishna was taking pleasure in the joking words and splashing water the demigods in the heavenly planets showered flowers the demigods thus praised the super excellent rasa dance of krishna the supreme enjoyer and his past times with the gopis in the water of the yamuna after this lord krishna and the gopis came out of the water and began to stroll along the bank of the yamuna where a nice breeze was blowing carrying the aroma of different kinds of flowers over the water and land while strolling on the bank of the yamuna krishna recited various kinds of poetry 
he thus enjoyed the company of the gopis in the soothing moonlight of autumn. Sex desire specially exhibited in the autumn season. But the wonderful thing about Krishna's association, the gopis, is that there was no question of sex desire. It was as clearly stated in the Bhagavatam description by Sukhdev Goswami, Avruddha Sumurat, the sex impulses was completely controlled. There is distinction between Lord Krishna's dancing and the gopis and the ordinary dancing of the living entity within the material world. In order to clear up the further misconception about the rasa dance, the appearance affairs of Krishna and the gopis, Maharaj Parishat, the hearer of Srimad Bhagavatam, told Sukhdev Goswami, Krishna appeared on the earth to establish the regulative principle of religion and to corrupt the pre, predominance of religion. But the behavior of Krishna and the gopis <coughs> might encourage a religion principle in the material world. I am simply surprised that he would act in such a way, enjoying the company of others, wives, in the dead of night. This statement of Maharaj Parishad was very much appreciated by Sukhdev Goswami. The answer anticipated the ab- abnormal act of the Mayavadi impersonalists who placed themselves in the position of Krishna and enjoy the company of young girls and women. The basic Vedic injunctions never allow a person to enjoy sex with any woman except his own wife. Krishna's appreciation of the gopis appeared to be distinctly in violation of these rules. Maharaj Parikshit understood the total situation from Sukhdev Goswami. Yet, to further clarify the transcendental nature of Krishna, and the gopi, gopis in the rasa dance, he expressed his surprise. This is very important in order to check the unrestricted association with women by the prakritta sahajyas. In his statement, Maharaj Parikshit had used, has used several important words which require clarification. The first word, jugupshitam, means abominable. The first doubt of Maharaj Parikshit was as follows. Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead who had invented himself to establish religious principles. Why then did he mix with others' wives in the dead of night and enjoy dancing, embracing, and kissing? According to the Vedic injunctions, this is not allowed. Also, When the gopis first came to him, he gave instructions to them to return to their homes, to call the wives of other persons or young girls and enjoy dancing with them is certainly abominable according to the Vedas. Why should Krishna have done this? Another word used here is aptakam. Some may take it for granted that Krishna was very lusty among young girls. But Parikshit Maharaj said that this was not possible. He could, be, he could not be lusty. First of all, from the material con- calculation, he was only eight years old. At that age, a boy can't be lusty. After Kama means the Supreme Personality of God is self-satisfied. Even if he were lusty, he doesn't need to take help from others so to satisfy his lusty desires. The next point is that, although not lusty himself, he might have been seduced by the lusty desires of the gopis. But Maharaj Parikshit then used another word, Yadupati, which indicates that Krishna is the most exalted personality in the dynasty of the Yadus. 
The kings in the dynasty of Yadus were considered to be the most pious and their descendants were also like that. Having taken birth in their family, how could Krishna have been seduced even by the gopis? It is concluded therefore that it was not possible for Krishna to do anything abominable. But Maharaj Parikshit was in the doubt as to why Krishna acted in that way. What was the real purpose? Another word Maharaj Parikshit used when he addressed Sukhdev Goswami is Suvrata, which means to take a vow to enact pious activities. Sukhdev Goswami was an educated brahmachari and under, under the circumstances it was not possible for him to indulge in sex. This is strictly prohibited for brahmacharis and what to speak of a brahmachari like Sukhadeva Goswami. But because the circumstances of the rasa dance were very suspect, Maharaj Parikshit inquired for clarification from Sukhadeva Goswami. Sukhadeva Goswami immediately replied that transgressions of religious principles by the Supreme Controller testified to his great power. For example, fire can consume any abominable thing. But in the manifestation of the supreme supremacy of fire, similarly the sun can absorb water from, the, from a urinal or from stool, and the sun is not polluted. Rather, due to the influence of the sunshine, the polluted, contaminated place becomes disinfected and sterilized. One may also argue that since Krishna is the supreme authority, his activities should be followed. In answer to this argument, Sukadeva Goswami has very clearly said that the Iswara or Supreme Controller may sometimes violate his own instructions. But this is possible only for the controller himself, not for the followers. Unusual and uncommon activities by the controller can never be imitated. Sukadeva Goswami wanted that the conditioned followers who are not actually in control should never even imagine imitating the uncommon activities of the controller. A Mayavadi philosopher may falsely claim to be God or Krishna, but he cannot actually act like Krishna. He can persuade his followers to falsely, to falsely imitate the rasa dance, but he is unable to lift Govardhana Hill. We have many experiences in the past of Mayavadi rascals who delivered their followers by posing. By posing themselves as Krishna in order to enjoy Rasa Leela. In many instances they were checked by the government, arrested and punished. In and punished in Orissa. Thakur Bhakti, Bhakti Vinod punished a so-called incarnation of Vishnu who was imitating the Rasalila with young girls. There were many complaints against the so-called incarnation. At that time, Bhakti Vinod Thakur was a magistrate and the government deputed him to deal with that rascal and he punished him very severely. The Rasalila dance cannot be imitated by anyone. Sukhdev Goswami warns that one should not even think of imitating it. He specifically mentions that if out of foolishness one tries to imitate Krishna's rasa dance, he will be killed. Just like a person who wants to imitate Lord Shiva's drinking of an ocean of poison. Lord Shiva drank an ocean of poison and kept it within his throat. The poison made his throat turn blue and therefore Lord Shiva is called Nilkantha. But if any ordinary person tries to imitate Lord Shiva by drinking poison or smoking ganja, he is sure to be vanquished and will die within a very short time. Lord Sri Krishna's dealings with the gopis occurred under special circumstances. Most of the gopis in their previous lives were great sages, expert in the study of the Vedas, and when Lord Krishna appeared as Lord Ramachandra, they wanted to enjoy with him. Lord Ramachandra gave them the benediction that their desires would be fulfilled when he would appear as Krishna. Therefore, 
the desire of the gopis to enjoy the appearance of lord krishna was long cherished so they approached the goddess kathiyani to have krishna as their husband there are many other circumstances which also testify to the supreme authority of krishna and show that he is not bound by the rules and regulations of the material world in special cases he acts as he likes to favor his devotees this is possible only for him because he is the supreme controller people in general should follow the instructions of lord krishna as given in the bhagavad gita and should not even imagine imitating lord krishna in the rasa dance Krishna's lifting of Govardhan hill and his killing of great demons like Putana are all obviously extraordinary activities. Similarly, the Rasa dance is also an uncommon activity and cannot be imitated by an any ordinary man. An ordinary person engaged in his occupational duty like Arjun should execute his duty for the satisfaction of Krishna. That is within his power. Arjun was a fighter and Krishna wanted to him to fight for his satisfaction. Arjun agreed although at first he was not willing to fight. Duties are required for ordinary persons. They should not jump up and try to imitate Krishna and indulge in rasa lila and thus bring about their ruin. One should know with certainty that Krishna had no personal interest in whatever he did for the benediction of the gopis. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita Namam kamani limpanti Krishna never enjoys or suffers the result of his activities therefore it is not possible for him to act irreligiously he is transcendental to all religious duties and principles he is untouched by the modes of material nature he is the supreme controller of all living entities whether in human society in demigod society in the heavenly planets planets or in lower forms of life and is also the supreme controller of material nature therefore he has nothing to do with religious or irreligious principles sukadev goswami further concludes that the great sages and devotees who are washed clean of all conditioned life can move freely even within the contamination of material nature by keeping krishna the supreme personality of godhead within their hearts in this way they also do not become subject to the law of pleasure and pain in the modes of material nature how then is it possible for krishna who appears by his own internal potency to be subject to the law of karma in the bhagavad gita the lord clearly says that whenever he appears he does so by his internal potency he is not forced to accept a body by the lords of karma like an ordinary living entity every other living entity is forced to accept a certain type of body by his previous actions but when krishna appears he always appears in a body that is not forced upon him by the actions of his past deeds his body is a vehicle for his transcendental pleasure pastimes which are enacted by his internal potency he has no obligation to the laws of karma the mayavadi monist must accept a certain type of body being forced by the laws of nature therefore his claim to being one with krishna or god is only theoretical such persons who claim to be equal with krishna and indulge in rasa lila create a dangerous situation for the people in general Krishna the supreme personality of godhead was already present as a super soul within the bodies of the gopis and their husbands he is the guide of all living entities as it is confirmed in the katha upanishad nitya nityanam chetana chetananam the super soul directs the individual soul to act and the super soul is the actor and witness of all action it is confirmed in it is confirmed in bhagavad gita that krishna is present in the everyone's heart and that from him come all knowledge remembrance and forgetfulness he is the original person to be known as vedic knowledge he is the author of the vedas 
Vedanta philosophy and he knows the Vedanta philosophy perfectly well. The so-called Vedantist and the Mayavadis cannot understand Krishna as he is. They simply mislead their followers by imitating the actions of Krishna in an unauthorized way. Krishna, the super soul of everyone, is already within the body of everyone. Therefore, he sees someone or embraces someone. There is no question of impropriety. Uh, so that concludes our hour of reading Krishna Book to Srila Prabhupada. And we'll continue next week uh, the rest of the description of the Rasa dance. So as we always do, let us offer our respectful obeisances to Srila Prabhupada and to each other. Namam Vishnu Vidaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharane Nirvasesha Sunyavadi Paskachadi Shatarane And to each other, Vancha Kalpa Dhrubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyevacha Patita Nam Pavne Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Adivo Jai Srila Prabhupada Jai Krishna Book <laughs> See you next week.